Hello, my name is Cynthia Coleman-Spark and I consult on pre-revolutionary Russian decorative arts. So that broadly covers objects made before 1917 and I value precious metals, enamels, jewellery, porcelain, glass, as well as wood and sometimes even walrus ivory. Now, of course, the market leader in my field remains Fabergé, the legendary purveyor of the exquisite Easter eggs that were gifted to the last empresses of Russia. I'm going to bring you back to the late 19th century in St. Petersburg to consider an object that frankly doesn't speak to me so much for its looks as for the story that it tells. I think that as a case study, it resonates for those of us who are considering the value of assets that are being insured by our clients. In 1885, the reigning emperor Alexander III turned to the firm of Fabergé to supply a fitting Easter gift for his consort, Maria Fyodorovna. The resulting Easter egg so delighted her that the luxury brand of Fabergé became synonymous with the series of Easter eggs that followed. Every year, almost without exception, the firm counted on having an Easter commission from its most important patron. When Alexander III died, his son Nicholas II then continued by doubling the order with one gifted to his mother, the Dowager Empress, and another egg then commissioned for his wife, the Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna. In 1887, an egg was invoiced to the court by Fabergé for 2,160 rubles, which is approximately the equivalent of 30,000 pounds in today's money. Now, it was confiscated uh, amongst all the imperial treasures and properties after 1917, and eventually made its way to the West and was sold without provenance in 1964 for around £875 in an estate auction. It resurfaced again in 2004, where it was purchased by a scrap metals dealer uh, at a Midwestern American flea market for the equivalent of around £8,000. Now, he had bought this thinking that breaking up the piece for gold and stone value would result in an increase in his investment. Thankfully, the value of the object was not in its intrinsic parts, but in the workmanship and the cachet associated with its maker. So he sat on this investment, unable to realize his initial uh, outlay until 2014, when he apparently began Googling words. I don't know what he Googled, but apparently it was something like egg, ovoid. Um, and it was confirmed that he was the owner of the third Fabergé egg ever made. It was sold for a reported 20 million pounds. And this story absolutely rocked the Fabergé world. We're talking about an an 8.2 centimeter gold egg housing a clock by Vacheron Constantin uh, inset with some diamonds and a few sapphires whose real value in parts, I repeat, was not above 8,000 pounds. And it was discovered in some sort of a trailer by a valuer who was offered a Dunkin Donuts breakfast. The American breakfast muffin was used for scale in one of the first images that I ever saw of the piece. My point is that the premium that collectors would pay if any further Fabergé eggs in good condition and with documented provenances appear on the market is enormous. In fact, the broker of the third egg thought that an insurance figure of £33 million would be appropriate given how rarely they appear on the market. So I routinely come across clients using probate valuations for insurance figures and these are totally inappropriate for replacement purposes. The Russian market vacillates wildly, and even insurance valuations set at retail replacement prices require a refresh every three years at the very least. If a £20 million Fabergé egg had been index linked and insured at, let's say, £22 million a few years later, when the correct retail replacement was set at £33 million in reality, there would be inadequate coverage in the event of a loss or damage. It's a great pity when clients put their passion into building the collection, but then don't invest in protecting it adequately. But it's not all doom and gloom. I would point out that of the 50 Easter eggs that were delivered to the last two empresses of Russia, we know the whereabouts of 43. You've done the maths. That leaves several out there that are unaccounted for and could be absolutely anywhere. The intrinsic value of the parts may be negligible compared to the price a collector would be willing to pay 
to acquire a piece of Romanov history. So happy hunting.